Hey there, folks. Welcome to another update on the situation in Iceland on the Reykjanes Peninsula. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Thanks for joining me. Today is Wednesday, December 10th. Uh, I'm over the hump in terms of finals week. We got all the geology stuff from our old building moved over to a new building while they do some remodeling. So um, I've got some time. So I thought I'd put together another update for you. There's a new Met Office update, which I thought warranted putting together a little video to show you the latest data and the trends here. Looking at this image here of Grindavik from one of the webcams nearby. This is actually a little bit later. The current view is uh, completely dark, um, but I thought I'd scroll back a little bit, give you a little bit of something nicer to look at there than just the lights. If we go back far enough, we can see kind of evening there in uh, Grindavik. Let's go ahead and get to that Met Office update. Um, so this just came out today, the latest one. They've been doing these every two weeks or so. And links to all these uh, data sources I have here in this update are under the video description. So probability of an eruption uh, continues to increase. So the waiting game just goes on and on and on. Uh, the key points here in the update, magma accumulation slow but steady. Um, eruption is expected as this continues to go on over time. Uncertainty in terms of the timing, there's just absolutely no way that we can know when this next event is going to take place. Um, and the magma accumulation, we'll look at the numbers here in a second, uh, lets us know that this is the fifth largest to date. In other words, uh, the amount of magma that's stored underneath this area is the fifth largest of this eruptive sequence, which began in December of 2023. Um, so you can see some of the information here. I think the big takeaways are that we have about uh, 17 million cubic meters of magma that have been stored in the area since our last eruption in July of this year. Um, and that's similar to what they had just before the eruption in May 2024. Nice little graph here uh, that shows, maybe we'll go ahead and make that bigger, why not? Uh, that shows all the eruptive events of the Sunukur system. Um, and then on the y-axis here is the amount of magma that was stored prior to the eruption taking place. You can see it's ranged anywhere from about 4 million cubic meters of magma, upwards of about 23 or so million cubic meters of magma. Our current situation shown with this red bar here is sitting at about 17 or so million cubic meters of magma. So uh, well above some of these other ones, um, when the system was much younger and the eruptions were maybe a, a little bit easier because uh, there wasn't as much storage in the system. We didn't have as much influx of magma. Since that time, we've <clears throat> apparently added more space in the subsurface through fracturing, through earthquakes, uh, possibly due to also partial melting of the rocks as the magma is sitting underground and more magma is rising into those existing rocks. It's heating it up. And if it heats it up to the point where you get some melting taking place, then that adds a little bit more space and volume to our magma storage system. So you can see those last five eruptions uh, and we're just now kind of cracking into you know, the top five or so there with the amount of magma in the system. Um, so that's some of the big highlights for the Met Office update. Um, they do note that the model calculations show that the rate of inflow is gradually decreased with each eruption. However, the rate remains fairly constant over the past two weeks. So we do have evidence that magma is continuing to rise into the system, but we've seen that decline over the past few, not just weeks, but even months or so. Uh, looking at some of the other data that's pertinent to this event taking place. Oh, and real quick here, seismic activity low. Uh, we'll look at that in detail, but 12 small earthquakes measured in just the last two weeks. So that would be one of the signals we would expect to see uh, if the magma was starting to you know, leave the system and either ascend towards the surface or break through the rocks in the subsurface and start to occupy some new space as an intrusion. So. The earthquake activity in Iceland over the last 24 hours, uh, as we get in here closer to Grindavik in the Svartsengi area here, you can see absolutely nothing in terms of earthquake activity. A couple earthquakes over near Lake Krevavat, a few here near the tip of the peninsula, but those are common places where we see these earthquakes. So nothing out of the ordinary there. Looking at the week's data, um, similar sort of trend, little cluster here around Lake Krevavat, maybe a few dozen or so few near uh, Fagodalsfjall, which had the eruptions from 2021 to 2023, 
And near Gurindavik and Svartsengi, it looks like we've got maybe four, a total of four in the past week, uh, with the biggest being this 1.8 here, just to the west of Gurindavik. And then again, a few offshore quakes. So very quiet on the Reykjanes Peninsula over the past week when, when we look at earthquakes. I thought it'd be fun. I love this website because you can, you can change the parameters of the dates here. Um, and then look at tr other trends. And so that's that's instructive and something I enjoy kind of messing around with. And so this is actually a map showing earthquakes for all of 2025. So this is the entirety of the year up through today, December 10th. And you can see where those quakes are occurring. Uh, the sizes are indicated by the size of the circle, bigger circles or bigger magnitudes. And then the color coding here just corresponds to how recent those quakes are. Ones that are way back towards the beginning of the year are shown in blue. Ones that are more recent within the last month or two are shown in red. Uh, but you can see again, lots of earthquakes off the uh, tip of the peninsula there along the plate boundary. Uh, the big cluster here near Lake Krevravat. Um, and then the trend here, which clearly delineates this magmatic dike, this basically vertical intrusion of magma that's feeding these eruptions going right through uh, Grindavik and then heading up to the northeast here. So that's the trend over the past year. And then I thought it would be fun to look back into the past and look at other calendar years and how did the earthquakes look at that time. Um, and what I hope to accomplish a little bit here is um, there's still quite a bit of uh, noise, I suppose is the best word. Whenever we get these earthquakes around uh, Lake Klevravat in this Krish, the Krishivik system over here, there's oftentimes, there's oftentimes people you know, wondering if that's associated with magma and are we going to see another eruption there? Is this system waking up? Uh, and what I hope to show here with just a few little quick images of this map is that this is a plate boundary. And unless we have a zone like we have here where we know we have uh, magma in the subsurface, we've had eruptions over the past two years, um, probably the more prudent thing is to consider most of these earthquakes as tectonic. Now they could be generated by magma, but without the ground deformation, the, the bulging of the land or any other evidence that suggests that they're truly magmatic in origin, I think that the safer course of action is to mostly, most of the times assume that these are tectonic in origin. We have an active plate boundary. There are stress on these rocks. And as these, these two plates are pulling apart the rocks, we're getting uh, a lot of earthquakes. It's much more common along this plate boundary to have tectonic quakes than anything volcanic. And if you just look at everything that happened there over the past few hundred years, basically, remember we had no earth, no volcanic activity on the Reykjanes Peninsula for several hundred years up until this most recent kind of flurry here. So what I have for you here is uh, a quick image of, this is all of 2011. So you can see 2011's sort of trend here. Uh, and again, the same sort of players pop up, some offshore quakes, uh, we did have a few in 2011 right around Grindavik, but then a big cluster here on the Krishuvik system. Uh, and of course, I wasn't following Iceland in 2011. Possibly there were people wondering if those were volcanic, but I think because we had these well-documented eruptions over the last two years here north of Grindavik, uh, now I think the common human response is to associate any earthquake activity on the Reykjanes with magmatic movement and possibly a volcanic event. And that's just not the case. That's just the wrong way to think about it. So um, earthquakes are great. Earthquakes are fun to track, but don't uh, go down, the, go down the, the dangerous hole there of assuming that earthquakes are 100% due to magmatic stresses or magmatic uh, sources, I suppose. So here's 2011, here's 2013. Um, again, similar trends. So little bit here on the offshore and tip of the peninsula area. Um, a few near Grindavik, a few around Fagradalsfjald, and then a cluster, maybe not quite as dense of a cluster here uh, around the Krishivik area. Again, I just arbitrarily picked some different uh, years. Here's 2015. You can see there was a lot of activity. Notice they're all green, so they all happened around the same time frame uh, off the tip of the peninsula. Again, just a scattered few around uh, Grindavik here. A few in the Fagradelsfjord area, um, and those, you know, maybe were related to what happened there, I guess, six years later. And then more here around uh, Krishuvik. Um, 2018, some similar patterns here. Notice there's more of the Fagradelsfjord ones picking up here. 
um, more here at the southwest tip, a few around Gunindavik, and more over here around Krishivik. Uh, so that's just a fun way to look at, again, going back to 2025. It does look like there's a lot more happening this year. I would, I would say that that does seem to be um, the trend, right? 2011, not as many quakes. Set these at the same sort of scale. 2013 again, 2015, 2018, and then again, going back to 2025, um, a lot more quakes there. But that makes sense because we have had these uh, volcanic intrusions and eruptions taking place here. And it is possible that these are related to magma movement deeper in the crust. But right now, there's just no definitive um, trend there in terms of this is magma on its way up towards the surface and there's going to be an eruption anytime soon. This, this type of activity might go on for decades before we see any sort of activity or centuries perhaps. Uh, so anyway, just some, a little bit of perspective there. Hope that might be helpful. Um, and then finally, as we wrap up this update, we'll go ahead and look at some of the GPS data. Uh, we'll start here with the, not that one, let's start with the Svartsingi station, um, but let's look at a few others as well. So here's the last year of the Svartsingi station. I can make that a little bit bigger. So you can see the uplift data here on this bottom graph from December of 2024. Uh, through this year, that ascends up until we get the eruption on April 1st. Then the area starts rising again as more magma moves towards the surface. Uh, that reach, reaches a critical threshold here in July of this past year. Uh, July, what was the date? July 16th, I should have known that. Uh, and then we had the, la the most recent eruption there. And now you can see this trend here. We're well beyond uh, that threshold, that elevation threshold for this station that um, we met for that July 16th eruption. We're a good maybe 80 millimeters or so beyond that, eight centimeters, about three inches, four inches, something like that, beyond that here. But you can see that the rate here, the slope of these lines of dots here has substantially sort of slowed down versus some of these trends here after. Uh, so big question is what will the critical threshold be for this current situation? Will it go past 400 millimeters? Will it go to 20? Would it be 390, which there in a few days or so? All things that remain to be seen. Um, looking at some of the other stations nearby, one's just near the power plant. We look at this one here, the interesting trend here is similar sort of thing where it's actually gone beyond um, that maximum threshold, but not by much. And I think if I show you another one here, some of the other stations a little bit further away from the center of the magma body or the center of the uplift anyway, showing something similar to this where it, yes, it is past that critical point, but not by much. And you can really see the difference in the trends here in terms of the slope of the data here. Until and a trend in that data here in which these two, at least with this. Um, let me show you one more. And this one here again shows a similar sort of thing where notice this one's kind of interesting that the maximum elevation reached prior to the eruption in April, pretty close to the same as it was. I, now we're just a skosh beyond that right here, higher than that. What will that actually be? The big takeaway here is that ground deformation still continues. We see that with the GPS data. We also see that with the INSAR data. Or recent passes with the, uh, for you, uh, with the satellites going over the area here. Uh, passing over this area from south to north. And so you can see the center of the uplift there. This is the Cosmo satellite. So basically one band color. Notice we go from this kind of deep blue over to this deep blue here. That's one full fringe of color. So that corresponds to about one and a half centimeters of uplift in this case. And thanks uh, to viewer Eric Fielding, who works for JPL in Pasadena, for helping me understand and be able to teach and uh, interpret these interferograms. So we can see pass from 23rd of November to December 9th, which was yesterday, still showing uplift. Evidence is, is pretty clear that there's still magma rising into the system. 
similar trend here looking at November 23rd to December 8th. Also with the Cosmo Sky Med, and you can again see basically a full fringe or spectrum, I guess, of color from the green to the green. And that's again about one and a half centimeters uplift going a little, little less than an inch, a little more. So uh, moving forward, we will just continue to monitor this. Uh, certainly when there's new updates from the Met Office, I will put these together. Will we have an eruption at all? Will it be an intrusion? Will it be before Christmas, on Christmas Day? Will it be in 2025 or 2026? These are all unknown unknowns so far, um, but we know that Iceland is as prepared as they can be. Um, we've got these live webcams situated on the scene, so it'll be great for those of us not in Iceland to be able to still experience the eruption as best we can and watch things as they play out. So I will provide you with more information as it comes available. Thanks for your support of the channel. Um, appreciate all you do, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.